So today I'm gonna share with you five key things in terms of what you can eat to lower your cortisol, which is stress hormone, and improve your hormonal balance because cortisol is number one hormone disruptor. And hormones are those chemicals that influence our mood and also our body shape. So with balanced hormones, you don't have to worry about being anxious out of nowhere or excess belly fat. So what's the best diet to lower your cortisol and balance your hormones? The answer is no diet at all. And I'm saying this because I tried a lot of diets from vegan to keto, carnivore, lots of different diet trends. And what I realized is that, first of all, diet has a bad association because it reminds us, oh, I cannot have something, I'm living in a restriction, which, not, which is not enjoyable. The other problem with diets is if we restrict ourselves from too much of something, it will have an effect on the body. So it can help us with one thing. For example, keto can help you with a weight loss for a pure amount of time. But if you do keto for too long, you may notice that you actually start gaining the weight again or your hormones became messed up because your body needs carbs for hormonal balance. And I know there may be this mental barrier that carbs will make me fat, or, but it's really about the quality and the amount of carbs. So of course, too much carbs will impact your insulin and mess up with your hormones. But you also need the bare minimum to maintain hormonal balance. And what is the bare minimum? I would never go lower than 120, 150 grams a day, but it will depend on your activity level, also on your work, type of work you're doing because the brain also needs carbs to function. And again, it's about making the whole process easy because yes, your brain can um, make the glucose from the fat, but it's about uh, optimizing the processes in your body. So instead of diet, I prefer more balanced approach and diversified way of eating because I do believe we should definitely cut out processed sugary foods, but we shouldn't remove too many foods from our uh, diet or daily meals. So the first thing, as I mentioned, carbs. Why carbs? Because your thyroid, which is kind of like the boss of our body. You can think about working in a big organization that on the top there is this CEO sitting and managing with all the people, all the processes, all the tasks to make sure the company brings the profit and uh, is doing well. So the same in your body. Thyroid is this boss sitting on the top controlling how much hormones you are producing, how you are metabolizing your hormones and that is necessary for your hormonal balance. And you also need a healthy thyroid to metabolize cortisol. And what happens quite often when you do just regular blood tests, you will see the total amount of cortisol, which may be within the range, but the blood test will not show you the free and metabolized cortisol. And the free cortisol is the, the one that does the uh, most damage. I like to do Dutch tests, for example, because it shows you more detailed overview on your cortisol and if you are metabolizing uh, cortisol well. But again, before going too much into like the details and complex uh, topics, carbs and making sure your thyroid uh, works well is like the bare uh, minimum. And why carbs? Because what happens when uh, your body is deprived of carbs it goes into survival mode and that creates their stress. And again, men, women are different. Men can go without carbs, but women not. The same with intermittent fasting. Men can do intermittent fasting, not much damage. But if women does the intermittent fasting for too long on having on the top stressful life, it will just add uh, fuel uh, to the fire. And when you restrict yourself like too much from the carbs, you will lower your thyroid hormones and with low thyroid hormones, everything in your body will slow down, which means the whole hormone metabolisms will be not working uh, well. Then the second thing, it's very interesting one. It's a COMT gene and B vitamins. COMT gene is the gene that helps your body metabolize basically the cortisol, the stress hormone. So again, you don't want to like reduce your cortisol too low, but you want to make sure that whatever your body is producing in a stressful situation, then it gets metabolized to inactive, unharmful uh, form of cortisol uh, when it's needed. And that process is dependent on 
methylation and B vitamins and also magnesium. So you wanna make sure you get variety of like magnesium and B vitamins from green leafy vegetables and a variety of like uh, protein. And yes, you need protein, but too much protein can actually slow down that comet and also create more toxic products because when we digest protein, it creates a toxic byproducts that then creates inflammation. And then again, with too much inflammation, um, that will mess up uh, your hormonal balance. Then the third thing, breakfast and coffee. So that's something I struggled for a long time because I love to have like my black Americano first thing in the morning. The thing is, it spikes your cortisol on empty stomach massively and it can uh, mess up your cortisol pattern uh, throughout the day. And what we want really is high cortisol in the morning, but not too high and gradually lower cortisol in the evening so it allows you to sleep, relax and recharge because again, lack of sleep increases your cortisol so we want to really have that like balanced um, approach so what is like must do, non-negotiable is really have that breakfast in the morning first before your coffee and if you're not a big breakfast person just have anything to get into your system and signal, send signal to your body, hey, I'm not starving, I'm not, sur I'm not in a survival threat mode and I'm okay. And then uh, the fourth thing, regular meals. And um, if you want, you can do intermediate fasting, but I would be really uh, mindful about that, especially if you struggle with hormonal balances already, because you need to do that um, in a right way. And what I mean regular meals, don't go for prolonged period of time without eating because that creates stress and if you struggle with high cortisol having that long window without eating increases cortisol even more and with um, cortisol in relation to other your hormones cortisol basically steals your progesterone your calming hormone and that leads then to estrogen dominance weight gain anxiety lots of other uh, symptoms and conditions Breakfast also is pretty much important because it kind of sets the tone of your day and also your sugar craving. So if you get the breakfast right, there is less risk of you craving wrong, uh, wrong uh, foods later in a day. And what doesn't mean good breakfast? It's basically a proper meal with healthy fats, carbs, um, and protein as well. I like, for example, protein porridge because I'm not a person that likes to have like proper eggs or um, like avocado uh, but make sure you get all those free macronutrients for your breakfast and the last thing sugar and i know it can be a bit contradictory because when we are stressed when we have high cortisol we naturally crave more sugar but that creates a bit of vicious cycle when we crave sugar when we eat sugar it depletes us from also zinc leads to more uh, estrogen dominance and also increases more uh, cortisol and more insulin messes up with all the uh, all the processes so if you crave sugar just have carbs or another uh, proper meal and i also promise you to share with you the secret ingredient in terms of hormonal balance that not many people uh, talk about but it's super important especially if it comes thyroid and as i mentioned thyroid is the boss of our body so you really want to get your thyroid uh, right before you start introducing more uh, things and the nutrient is specifically iodine because it's not only helps you with metabolizing cortisol it's also much needed for your adrenal health and again for your uh, thyroid because adrenals and thyroid also work uh, together and with iodine supplementation i would be rather careful because if you have too much without selenium and other cofactors it can create oxid oxidative stress and inflammation so the, bo the best safest way uh, to get iodine without uh, doing tests and uh, basically is from food uh, which means seaweed, of course, like the most abundant uh, abundant uh, source of iodine, but also seafood overall and fish like cod or prawns have decent uh, amount of iodine. So to summarize, eat enough carbs, restrict sugars, make sure you get enough of B vitamins because that's for your COMT gene, which is the number one hormone in terms of like cortisol metabolism. Then breakfast first, coffee later, 
have regular meals, don't skip the meals, don't replace them with sugary snacks. Also ensure you get enough of iodine-rich foods because that's the number one nutrient in terms of like thyroid, estrogen dominance, hormonal balance, cortisol metabolism is like golden uh, nutrients that you also, as an interesting fact, lose with sweat. So if you exercise, you actually need even uh, more. Hope that was helpful. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe.